All right, with that said, let's prepare our hearts for worship as we invite Charlie to share his prelude. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. Come, let us give thanks to God. Come, let us give thanks to Christ. Come, let us give thanks to the Spirit.
join me in the confession of sin. Mighty God, we confess the arrogance of our doubts and the falsehood of our denials. We have neglected to pray and have forgotten to give thanks. Many activities have become more important to us than gathering for worship. Our busyness crowds at times of private prayer. We shake our heads at the evil around us, but do little to witness to a better way. Your law is seldom consulted, and your pathways of self-sacrificing love rarely explored. Turn us around, God. Only you can meet our need. Amen. The good news is that God forgives you, forgive others, and forgive yourselves. Be seated. The first reading is from Amos 1, verses 1 and 2. The words of Amos, who was among the shepherds of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of King Uzziah of Judah, and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of Joash of Israel, two years before the earthquake. And he said, the Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds wither and the top of Carmel dries up. And we skip to Amos 5, verses 14 through 15. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good and establish justice in, in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnants of Joseph.
Our third reading continues in Amos chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of God for the people of God. I can't say I've ever really experienced injustice. I've been blessed in my life and realized that I've known a great deal of privilege. The only thing I've really encountered in my life comes to do with the stigma of mental illness, where people accuse me of not having enough faith or not praying hard enough for needing meds to keep myself sane. But as far as other things go, you know, Jacqueline and I have had our times where we've struggled from paycheck to paycheck, but it always seems that we have gotten by. But there are a lot of people out there who are not getting by, and there are a lot of people out there who are subject to injustice, either because of the color of their skin, either because of how they look or where they come from or who they love. There are people out there who are judged and oppressed for being poor, even some for um, being disabled or some for being simply aged. There's a great commercial, I don't want to say it's a great commercial, but a very um, tough commercial from Dare to Care where you've got the man who brings his bread and peanut butter up to the pharmacy counter and he has to choose between buying food for himself or buying his medicines, and he ends up putting the bread and the peanut butter aside just so he can afford medicine. That is an injustice in our society where people have to choose between food and medical care. Amos was a shepherd when he was called to become a prophet for the Lord. And what that lets us know about him is that he was among the riffraff or ragamuffins of society. As we come to our Christmas story here within a month or so, we remember how the shepherds were poor and lowly, how they were outcasts of their society, how they were despised. Well, we are told that Amos was a shepherd of Tekoa when he was called to become a prophet. He was called as a poor outcast to speak for the poor outcasts of Israel. We are told that he arises as a prophet during the reigns of Jeroboam in the north, Jeroboam the second in the north, and Uzziah in the south. And at the time, both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were at its most, their most prosperous times that they had perhaps ever known. The northern kingdom enjoyed a great deal of wealth and prosperity, as did the southern kingdom enjoy a time of peace and prosperity. And both kingdoms were thriving when Amos the prophet arose to speak God's word. But there were problems in Israel. They were worshiping at, at certain cultic sites instead of the temple in Jerusalem that we talked about last week, and they were oppressing the poor. Amos especially called out in the northern kingdom the selfishness and the materialism of the upper class and their complete neglect of the poorer classes. And we're talking back then when we talk about class you have the very, very top percent of people who had the wealth, and the rest of the country was basically poor. There was no middle class back in the days of the prophets. And so the majority of Israel was being neglected, while this upper percentage had all the material goods 
and did whatever it was to please themselves. Amos arose with a message that basically you could describe as saying that the true wealth of a nation is defined by how it treats its poor. And Amos would look at all the wealth and the power of the nation of Israel and it would say that it came to naught because of how neglected and mistreated the poor in that nation were. The same can be applied to our own country today, is that the wealth of our nation ought to be judged by how we treat the poor. Are all people getting access to health care? Are all people getting access to quality education? Are all people able to put food on the table? Are all people able to afford housing to live in? And the answer to those questions are no. In our own nation, poverty is a very real thing. And there are many people that it's not a sin. That's one thing that I've learned is that poor people are not sinners. Oftentimes, they are victims of an economy that they can't keep up with. It's incredibly difficult to keep a house and to keep food on the table when people have to work 70 to 90 hours a week at minimum wage just to afford, to afford those basic comforts. I don't have all the solutions and I'm not here to point fingers. I just know that the poor in our country have to fight every day sometimes to survive. And sometimes they show up here and tell me their story about how they lost their job because of an abusive relationship, about how they can't afford to put food on the table because they lost a primary caregiver, about how they are afraid to go home because of an abusive parent or an abusive boyfriend. Our poor in this country fight every single day and they are good people and they need people to speak up for them. That's why I like this fact that Amos was not just a spokesperson of God. He was a spokesperson of the poor. He was a poor shepherd when he spoke up and called out the great wealth inequality in his own nation. He was speaking on behalf of those who were being marginalized and oppressed. And he took on their burdens as the Lord's burdens. And he called Israel to repent. He called them to seek good, not evil. In fact, he told them to hate evil and to love good. What he means at this point is to seek God because he believed in verse 5, chapter 4, that God alone was good. What had happened and why Amos believed that the people had gotten away from caring for the entire country is because they'd gotten away from God. In the south, under Uzziah, the people had gotten away from following God's law. Meanwhile, in the north, I mentioned that they had began worshiping at cultic sites rather than the true worship of God in the temple of Jerusalem. So the people had quit seeking God, and thus they had quit seeking doing good. And instead, they did evil. They wronged their neighbor. They didn't take care of one another, and they let people fall through the cracks. And he told them that true worship wasn't about fancy festivals or solemn observances, that true worship wasn't what you just did on Sunday morning, we might say. It's what you did throughout your life. And besides doing good, Amos uses two words together that are of utmost importance to him. He said that true worship of God was in practicing righteousness and in doing justice. Righteousness and justice often go together in the Old Testament. And for the prophets, they go hand in hand. 
Righteousness is in being in right relationship with God, right relationship with yourself, and most importantly, right relationship with one another. It means doing the right thing as God would have you do it and doing the right things for others as they deserve. Righteousness is about the preservation of a right relationship and faith with God, as well as ensuring the basic rights of human beings in the land, all people in the land. Justice means making sure that people get what they deserve. And all people deserve access to health care. All people deserve access to healthy food. All people deserve, our children deserve access to schools that aren't crumbling and that they aren't packed in with more students than they have space for. All people have access to be treated or have the right to be treated simply as human beings. Righteousness means doing the right thing by everyone that you meet. Justice means ensuring the rights of everyone, especially the poor and the marginalized. The one thing I can say about Larry Wheeler today, I'll say at his funeral as well, is that he was one of the nicest people you will ever meet. But also in his life, he thought that everyone was the nicest person he'd ever meet. And he'd sit and talk with garbage people. He'd sit and talk with the homeless. He'd sit and talk with the produce manager. He would, there was never a friend that he didn't meet. He treated everyone as if they were special and as if they were the nicest people that they'd ever meet. And he was consistent about it. And he was always quick with a smile or with a joke. But where you stood with Larry is where, you, where everyone stood that they were the nicest, most special, and most deserving people of his attention at the time that he met them. That's an example for us all to follow, that we understand that there are a lot of nice people in the world. There are a lot of good people doing what they need to do just to get by. And we need to be there for them as much as they are for us especially those who serve us, especially those with those minimum wage jobs that get very little thanks, especially with those who are going to work long hours during this holiday season but might not have enough money saved to put Christmas presents under the Christmas tree. We need to do our part, whether it be through the angel tree or just by making a donation to the Salvation Army that we can ensure that we're taking care of our children during the holiday season as we do in our support for Miles for Mary miracles. The baby we remember who was born on Christmas Day came to bring good news not to the wealthy or the powerful, but he came to bring good news to the poor and to bring justice to the oppressed. He came to save those that Amos spoke up about during the 8th century. He came to ensure that everyone had the right to grace, to love, to justice, to hope, and to salvation. He didn't come to save a select few in the world. He came because God so loved the world, all of it, that God gave God's only son. As his follower, you are called to do what good you can and whatever you can to see that justice is done for all. You may not have a chance to speak up for every child, but you might find that one child that you can make a difference in their life by mentoring. Or you can begin at home and make sure your children are being raised to care for those kids at school who are being bullied who are being left behind. And we can all do our part to pitch in a little extra during not just the holidays, but during the year as well as we support Hope Southern Indiana, as we support the mission of this church, 
as we do what we can to those people who end up migrating to churches for help because they still believe that we are beacons of good news for the poor. People still believe that we are here to do justice. People still believe that we are here to help. And as a small church, we have helped many over the years. So as his follower, you are called to do what good you can and whatever you can to see that justice is done for all. But the most important thing I want you to do is to make everyone feel like they're human. That homeless person holding the sign on the side of the road, perhaps with a dog begging for handouts, that is a human being. The person sleeping outside of our church window on our patio, who sometimes doesn't clean up after themselves, that's a human being. The person you see with the backpack walking down the road on the shoulder, headed to who knows where, That's a human being. When we see people as humans, we see them as children of God. And we need to do what we can to make people feel like human beings. So again, as we head into that shopping season, as I've reminded you before, if someone has a name tag on, thank them by name. Thank them for helping you this holiday season as you get your gifts for your family. Go out to Walmart and shop on the tax-free day and buy something for someone else for Christmas. But basically realize that we are a humanity together, a humanity that Jesus Christ came because he loved us and he wanted to save us from ourselves. There are people out there who experience injustice every single day. But we are called not just to pray, but to do everything in our power so that justice rolls down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We still need that justice to roll down in the world. We need to pray that righteousness prevails so that one day there is not one person who's living from paycheck to paycheck to support their family. We need to pray for justice to flow so that there is a day that comes that no one is judged for the color of their skin, no one is judged for their gender, no one is judged because they love someone that people think they shouldn't love. Justice that every person is taken care of because that's why Jesus came. He came as the Prince of Peace, but he came to roll down justice from heaven. He came so that righteousness might flow like an ever-flowing stream. So let us do our parts. Even if we don't know what it feels like, may we feel the injustices of the world around us and do our part to speak out, to step up, and to show God's love whenever, to whomever, and however we can. Amen.
definition of faith comes from the study catechism. And I ask you, what is God's purpose for your life? How do you live by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? I am not my own. I have been bought with a price. The Lord Jesus Christ loved me and gave himself for me. I entrust myself completely to his care. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the changing of the seasons and for the beginning glimpses of the season to come. We ask that you help us to slow down and not hurry to the manger, but to enjoy this special time of year where we are reminded of faith and hope and love. We ask that you fill our hearts with gratitude for not just the blessings we have in our lives, but the blessing of those who, with whom we live our lives. Lord, I thank you for the faithful witnesses of all the saints. And this morning, I especially thank you for the faithful witness of your servant, Larry Wheeler, who we lost suddenly this week. I ask that you be with Joanne and Amy and Mandy and the grandkids, as well as all of us who grieve him. He was a bright light among us, and we pray that Joanne knows that that light still goes on. We thank you for his love of others and his love of animals. We lift up Vicki's brother, Kenny, and ask that you be healing and help for him. We ask that you be with Mike and Garrett, both battling chronic diseases. We ask that you be with Addison and her parents as she has surgery this weekend. And we pray for the My Clubbers who lost a caregiver this week and be with their new caregiver as they help them navigate that loss. Lord, I thank you for the opportunities that we have to serve you as a church. I thank you for the reputation we have of being a place that loves and cares for others. May we do our part to see that justice and oppression are, or that injustice and oppression are faced wherever we meet them. May we do our best to give a voice to the poor and the oppressed and like Jesus, to bring good news to them and to bring a word of freedom in his name. Be with all the churches out there. Be with those who are struggling just to get by and be with those who are doing a great deal for their community. Be with those around the world who gather under the threat of violence and help us always remember that we are a church universal but also triumphant, made up of the mighty saints of God, both here on earth and in heaven. Be with this great nation of ours. I ask a special blessing again be upon our veterans this week, both those who have served and have gone on before us and those who have served our nation and are still with us. Help us to ensure that we hold our politicians to policies that take care of our veterans. And we pray for those veterans who find themselves homeless and on the streets. 
many because of suffering from PTSD. Lord, I ask that you be with our nation and its leaders, be with our president and our vice president, be with our state and local legal officials as well. Lord, I pray for those who are weak and suffering in the world. I pray for those who work tirelessly to try to provide for their families. I pray for those in broken relationships. I pray for those in abusive relationships that they are having troubles freeing themselves from. I pray for those who are oppressed because of the color of their skin. And I pray against the institution of racism and its prevalence still in society in places both big and small. I pray for those who have lost confidence in themselves. I pray for those who are grieving, especially those who are without hope. I pray for those who are at war with others or at war with themselves. I pray for the one who lacks the hope to get through another day and pray that somehow they see the light and that they know that their life is worth it. They matter because they matter to us and they matter to you. Help us do what we can to show your agape love because sometimes a smile keeps, per keeps a person going in their day or a kind word or a conversation, sometimes just making someone feel like they're human for just a moment makes all the difference in the world. And Holy Spirit, help us to be more and more like Jesus each and every day. Help us to be as kind as he was. Help us to be as generous as he was. Help us to lay down our lives like he did for us. And help us always to do what it is that he would have us do in any situation, at any time, and to anyone. Forgive us for the grudges that we hold against our enemies and help us to be people of peace and forgiveness. Now I invite my brothers and sisters to add any other prayers that they have in a moment of silence. Give us wisdom to know that your answers come in your way, in patience knowing that they come in your time. Hear us as we pray. Holy Spirit, unite our hearts with all the saints on earth and in heaven as we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
prayer of the day. O oh God, your blessed Son came into this world that he might destroy the works of evil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may be purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal king, glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the light of Christ surround you. May the love of Father God enfold you. May the power of Holy Spirit protect you. And may the presence of God watch over you. And remember, wherever you are, God is and all will be well. Go in peace. Thank you.